Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's been a little bit. So just a little little update. We'll be getting Nirvana very soon. On this account, we are 1,300 of these little things away from achieving Nirvana when we upgrade to Temple Level 10. Um, I plan to test Luna's Nirvana head-to-head -head against Aspen's Nirvana. And then I just want to see what Luna can do. I suspect she will only be useful in PvP, and LFA will still reign supreme in terms of boss damage in PvE, but it will at least be cool to see in action. Uh, so, two things I have on the account are the... I'm just going to call that the better melodic strings, and I'm going to call it the better antlers cane. So I'm just going to give you my impression of them. I can do testing on footage if you'd like confirmation of the things that I'm about to say, which is totally fair. Wording will only get you so far. But uh, just some gameplay to talk over while I talk about it. Uh, so... LFA obviously opening up with a humongous active skill with the new melodic strings. Um, my impression of the Antler's Cane, we'll talk about melodic strings first actually since I'm using melodic strings right now. Uh, it seems pretty strong. The effects have been more pronounced, I guess you could say. In PvP modes, I've noticed my opening active skill is absolutely devastating um, to most enemies with divine power levels that are below what my LFA has, which is nice. Um, the upgrade from regular melodic strings to the uh, better one, uh, it did not give me any PvE progress, though. Not at all. Um... I was unable to pass 713 with regular Splendid Melodic Strings. I got the new one, and I'm still similarly unable to nuke it. So that feels a little bit bad. Um, I should probably do a comparison, one-to-one, -one, just so I can show exactly how ineffective it was. But... It is what it is. I mean, the interesting thing is, 711 is a triple Valk stage, and I was able to get that one down. 713 has two Cthulhu's as the problematic heroes, and I am not able to pass that one. So, a little bit strange. It is what it is, though. But. Yeah, melodic strings is uh, it seems it seems pretty good, definitely good in theory. I like how it renews its damage buff effect at round four. That's especially helpful because it lets you get at least one monster buff on the field, plus whatever your buffs that you, you're getting from your team are. Uh, so it's a it's a pretty decent artifact. There's a lot of situations where it can be very helpful. Uh, in terms of Antler's Cane, uh, I'm less convinced that getting it fully splendid is effective. The only real context I can see that being useful is in PvP, which means I sort of regret doing it. Uh, as you can see, I was a little bit stronger than this guy in terms of my divine power, but not by much. Uh, and then this guy was way overstattered for. I think I can just wipe his TBB off the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty good. Um, but yeah, Melodic Strings, it's working very well against people you can outspeed in PvP. Um, and as for Antler's Cane, I really only see utility in getting it to Splendid if you care about PvP. Because if the fights are going to be lasting that long in PvE, in most PvE modes, you're just going to have TBB. And at that point, it doesn't matter what artifact your main damage dealer has. Because you're just going to be 
fighting for however long it takes to whittle them down. And then TVB is just going to allow that fight to last effectively forever. Uh, so that's that's how I feel about these artifacts thus far. Um, Antler's Cane, probably not worth taking to Glittery. Um, in fact, maybe not even worth taking beyond uh, into its new upgraded version. Um, the damage that I dealt in Star Expedition was improved compared to regular Antlers. Um, but again, as would be expected based on the description of the artifact, only uh, as far as you would expect the extra skill damage and precision to get you. Um, so whether or not you actually care about uh, the extra damage, I mean, the, like it turns into 300% skill damage, which is really awesome on paper, but whether or not it's worth it for you, um, you could probably, probably consider other options. Uh, it's not going to be too impactful. Melodic Strings, probably I would recommend for most people, unless you're really, really focused on Star Expedition. Uh, this turns out to be an interesting fight. HHA finally did his job in taunting their TVB, uh, sparing my team the twine, which is very nice. Um, some other new artifacts that I am curious about. Um, I, I will be getting the Dragon Rui, probably as my next one. Uh, just because I want to be able to outspeed new Aspen Dungeon, whenever that comes. If it does, I'm not really sure. But uh, I want to be able to outspeed as much of Aspen Dungeon as possible <laughs> so I can compete on my server. Uh, there is another guy. He has, I think, like probably double my power at this point. Uh, he's absolutely insane. Crazy strong, and the only way that I'm going to be able to beat him to first place on the Aspen Dungeon leaderboard is if uh, is if I'm able to outspeed all of Aspen Dungeon and don't have to fight all of the waves head on. So Dragon Rui looks very cool. Um, anything else? Also, the new Auspicious Cat looks kind of lame. The new mirrors look decent. Um, but again, it has they, they have the same issue as the regular mirrors do. You kind of need like four of them if they're going to be any kind of helpful on your account. And getting four of these things, well, gee, that's, uh, that's quite the investment. Because we're talking about four of these fancy blue chests for each of your four mirrors. So that's, uh, that's 16 fancy blue chests for... A team full of mirrors, I'm unsure that that is worth the investment. But I'm sure we'll have them all eventually anyway. His LFA takes out mine, which I thought meant we would lose. It turns out not to be the case, as you could see by the fight screen before this. Uh, so my supporters, they were able to turn this one around and pull out the victory. Um, for PvP, I would really, really love a team full of these new fans. The new fans look brutally strong. Uh, more crit damage reduction, energy feed, <laughs> whatever, taking hits or something like that. Um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what it is. I need to refresh my memory. But, man, those things look cool. Even just the art design on the fans, it looks super, super clean. I really like to look at the new fans. Um, but yeah, Luna, she doesn't have a skin, and there's not a skin teased in the spoilers for this upcoming event either, so I don't know if they forgot it, or if Luna's just straight, straight up not getting a skin, which would be kind of bizarre. Maybe she'll be getting the next, like, summer bikini one. Summer, like, whiskey, or whatever it's called. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, but she do be needing a skin, um, but yeah, I'm hoping she turns out to be more than just an HHA tenant for me. And this guy actually had the divine power advantage on me, which is nice. <sighs> Love that. But so let's take a look here. Um,
Um, yeah, so right now, Luna is, I should probably put these guys back in. I don't know why I took them out in the first place, but it is what it is. Um, Luna is just a tenant right now for HHA. Uh, a pretty good one. Uh, as you can see, I can, there's, and there's some room for upgrading. I don't know if this will hit 7k attack if and when, um, I decide to sort of take this to max B plus. Um, I hope it does, but it, it'll be a close one for sure. Uh, her skills seem cool, almost entirely conducive to dealing damage. Um, very awesome sounding skills. Uh, let's see if we can sort of get a little demonstration here. Just so you can see, we'll look at... Mm, that guy's probably too strong. That guy's probably too weak. We'll look at this one just in case. Uh, she seems incredibly cool, at very least. I like the. I, I'm a big fan of the stance swap things that she and Machman have going on. Very awesome. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going to change much for Luna because SSM becomes either a counter attack guy or a full out nuker guy. Um, Luna is just two <laughs> two different types of damage dealers, which uh, is pretty cool. You can see the little chases there, but yeah, I'm not really sure about the uh, the efficacy of Luna as of now, but very cool skill set at uh, at least. So we'll swap over so we can see her other one. We'll give her melodic strings, bam, and then we'll go all the way back down to the same dude, and we'll take a look. So this is her devastating form, although admittedly, it doesn't really seem to be super devastating. Um, her weaker, like her knife stabby form, seems better than this one, uh, which is a little bit interesting, but I don't know. It's too soon to make an appraisal because she doesn't have any destiny on her right now. So it will be interesting to see what exactly she's able to do. I want to test her in PvP, for sure. Seems like she could be a very potent damage dealer in PvP. But, but yeah, I'm still, I don't, I still don't have the greatest handle on how she works. So we'll just have to see how this pans out. Um, but yeah, expect some Nirvana testing with her sooner rather than later. Um, Nirvana LFA will be with us in a matter of hours, actually, because if I don't get it from just this passive farming of these, there's a Starry Gem component of this coming event. And unless I get very unlucky, uh, we are expecting to breach that 1300 blue gem threshold. So that will be, ex that would be especially cool. I look forward to testing this guy out in Star Expedition and also testing Luna out in PvP and in Flame Shrine so that we can really get a handle on what her capabilities are. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Have yourselves a wonderful day.